Hey guys, Kevin here from the Strictly Broken TCG team, and with me today are my teammates who came along with me to win the uh, Houston BCF Championship. Uh, I have Mr. Uh, player A would be our anchor, Mr. Nikolai from Berlin. Oh, no, I was no. player A. Well, were you player A? I'm player A, yeah. Oh, player okay, A. okay. Oliver, we have the anchor, <laughs> Oliver Burke from Hello. No Team. Someone sponsored him. Yeah, sponsor me, please. <laughs> he came all the way from... Ch Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, that place. You know, the, the place with the pizza, the deep dish. Yeah. yeah that's Don't you hate deep dish? <laughs> I, it's disgusting. <laughs> uh, he was one of our last member to join us. He actually decided to come down to Houston like two weeks before the event actually started. Real it was homie. something like that, yeah. Real homie who was able to get time off in a short notice and join us. Yep. As we we're looking for a third member. Uh, and also with us, we have the, the actual player C, uh, Mr. Nickel from Burn One. Hey, what's up, guys? A resident, a long time member of this community. You probably see a lot, uh, a lot of old Burn One videos. He also he used to go to a bunch of BCFs before. A bunch of trios previously with Dean and mm -hmm. Kit, but they didn't pick uh, them up. Yeah, they kind of killed that, but like, yeah, we used to just go pretty travel to pretty much. I think almost, I think at one point we traveled to almost every single one that was inside the continental United States outside of California. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we are, we are crew that we all join up together to team up. Uh, Nico got kicked out. For, as being the fourth burn one person going to Houston, and I was the fourth. Hey, it wasn't getting kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first strictly broken member for, that was going to Houston. So we we're, were the fourth wheelers who teamed up together and brought along Oliver in the last last moment notice. But then we yeah. ended up. Well, well, we never played against burn one, but we ended up destroying a strictly broken team with uh, Clinton, <laughs> Roderick, and UA. Well, we didn't destroy them in uh, in pools. Swiss, in Swiss, yeah. Thank God, thank God we destroyed them in finals. <laughs> Indeed. Yep. Yeah, uh, for our decks, well, our team's called Standby doesn't push damage. As we know, tournament coming up, a lot of people were eyeing 7 Deadly Sins, 8 Standby, Quintuplets, and Prosley Kanta, Mari in the Hall of Life as the best deck. Uh, our team, we only picked up one of those decks. We only picked seven deadly sins with all of you here, and the two of us decided to play what we felt m most comfortable on, rather than what we thought was the best deck in meta. Yeah, uh, I picked up slime. Uh, I've been playing slime basically almost a year now, ever since Mashoku got hit. And then Nico here is playing at Bang Dream. I said he just picked up a couple weeks before the tournament. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank your. Um, I'm not sure what your like locals uh, Discord or uh, what his tag is. Uh, thank him again um, for sourcing me a lot of like the anniversary cards. Like I had a lot of the old shit, but he like went out of his way to actually just give me the entire deck. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. No worries. I already told him that he is now a championship deck. I wrote like a <laughs> like a regional champion deck now, and he. I already told him. He said thanks. I'll, I'll give you his Discord. Uh, info if you want to thank him personally. Yeah, I would like to, please. For sure, for sure. Alright, with that being said, uh, let's talk about our decks and in, uh, some of our choices. We'll start with, with our anchor. Uh, anchor was Oliver, right? Yep. yep. Alright. We got the standard, but post-banless. Post-banless 7 Deadly Sins, you want to talk about it a bit? Post yeah, post uh... So yeah, I played uh, Seven Deadly Sins uh, after the the ban list where they hit the Gil Thunder and the level zero. Uh, I, in testing, uh, the I was feeling a little down on it, but um, in hindsight, that was probably just due to low rolling at locals and testing. Uh, the deck kind of still just does the same thing it's always done. It's just maybe a little slight less consistency. And you don't always kill your opponent from like mid two anymore, but um, from three to zero, your opponent's still basically dead as long as you have the setup. Yeah, they uh, just fucking explode. 
Yeah, uh, I chose to play uh, four of the Meliodas Climax. Uh, I know that uh, four Liz, I believe, is starting to get more popular because it plays a bit more towards the um, floor. You just kind of get to like turn your brain off and slam slam attackers every turn. Uh, I really wanted the um, Selective Salvage off the 2-1, just so I can ensure I can set up my Escanors every turn. Uh, and also because um, that level 1 board of 1-0 uh, Meliodas and 2-1 uh, is hard for some decks to actually out. Uh, other than that, you know, I mean, the deck, yeah, the deck's game plan is pretty much the same it's always been. You, just, you set up double Escanor, you set up a 1, maybe 2 bounces, and then you just... just skyrocket your opponent to level four um should i just like go over like individual card choices i think uh if you let me ask you me a question how much did the uh, petite elizabeth uh like how much work did that card put in for it you? actually put in good work um uh against uh con against contamarine uh it made it so that they couldn't uh scale my board even with the uh even with a door climax if they played it mm -hmm. uh especially against broderick when i played him and i get and my other sds mirror uh if you establish your board first and get the global out uh, if they don't respond with their own global they literally cannot out your board yeah so uh you you get, they literally higher, you're just like get to 500 power out or under right yeah they're just 500 power under <clears throat> uh and then the the heal didn't put in as much work as I was hoping, but uh, so I mean, did you it, resolve the effect at all? I did. Uh, it didn't. It, it, but the 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 game that I did it ended up not mattering. Mm. So uh, <laughs> if you want to play another global five hundred with a different utility effect, you can. Uh, I just I, I just went with the, the Elizabeth because it is good into the mirror and TRV to ensure you don't just you know immediately die. I mean, you said the Global 5 put in a lot of work, right? I think that's, like, yeah. the Global 5 put in work, and then, like, the heal is, like, that's only, that's, like, a win more effect, right? It's that's win like, more if like, usually. If you're, like, sacking extra turns, you can pay two to yeah. heal. Yeah, it also, yeah, it also ends up being, like, a pretty good stock out, too. I, I have used it as a stock out before. All right, I think another interesting question some people might have is, like, you're playing two oversized CX swap instead of just smashing more of the Check top two thoughts on that. Yeah, so I kind of in my testing, I kind of um, felt like the top check two didn't really matter as much because uh, you can't usually you you have a harder time like digging through uh, cards because uh, it's usually an extra card you want to sculpt. Um, also, the um, I want to always resolve Meliodas on my first level one turn. Uh, so I decided that I wanted to play the extra oversizes for that reason. So if I open those, uh, it, it's it's two more cards I can open that can potentially live and help me set up my full board condition at level one. Because mm -hmm. yeah, now you have sense. your four runners, four chasers, yeah. plus the two Meliodas. Yeah. As well as you don't mind opening with this either. Mm -hmm. Ten cards to open on turn one. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Everything else is pretty standard if you ever played 7 Deadly Sins or had people play 7 Deadly Sins. Uh, we won't go through a full, uh, what's it called? Uh, deck, what's it called? Deck review? Yeah, I don't think we need to do like a full deck rundown because it's like, right? It's, uh, <coughs> at this point, like if you've played against SDS, it's pretty obvious, right? So like Elaine Brainstorm puts in a lot of work. Yeah. Um, the one zero Meliodas is broken because you just get to like... It's a ditch out, and you just get to summon another copy of it. It lets you select your trigger, so, like, it lets you just, like, put, like, gives you a greater chance to push two or three without a climax on first deck. It, yeah. Yeah, the one zero Melios is definitely a card that no one thought was good when it came out, and it became, ended up becoming probably one of the best cards in the deck. Yeah. Which is really funny. Being 6-5 walls, 7k of the global, and then you mm -hmm. choose your trigger means mm -hmm. you can push damage without even slamming a CX. As you can take for soul triggers, and this deck plays twenty-seven soul triggers, so uh, over half your decks are tri triggers. So the chances of this hitting 
increasing this really increases the chance of this ends up hitting a trigger swing for twos or threes yeah <clears throat> all right that's seven really sin deck uh i think oliver might want to create a deck profile on his own channel that's what it's called deck profile uh so yeah. if he does i'll link it to the video if we when we upload this onto youtube uh there's also other videos from burn one and trust collectibles i believe that will also talk about the seven deadly sun decks which would be pre-banned though right i don't think a lot of stuff like really changes post ban though like you just <clears throat> you lose a, like the the gill thunder the level three gill thunder effect but like yeah. merlin you lose, how, how do you put it? You lose, like, the ceiling, but you gain a lot more floor with you Merlin. Do. That's the other, yeah, that's the other thing I should say. Merlin, acts, like, really actually helps your floor a lot. It being a coming to play salvage came up multiple times. <laughs> Sometimes you give, you give up the bounce for it, <laughs> but, like, it, how, giving up a bounce to, like, being able to, like, Escanor that turn is, is, is perfectly fine. <laughs> So weaker ceiling but better floor. Yeah. Cool card. I Which... will say, uh, uh, in a south format, this deck is probably the way I play this deck is not going to be playable. Yeah, you're probably pivot to like four Elizabeth Stocks Yeah. Time. Would you, would you even consider even running Meliodas? Um, uh... You probably like put it to like a two of right. You like put it into like a if you got it, you got it. If you don't, you don't even like play for it. Uh, it it's a card that I still would like to resolve like once mm -hmm. maybe at level two uh but yeah i'll probably cut it down to like two or three uh i'm actually also thinking of maybe going three three for stock souls uh just because there you, it, there are times where it's like i really i would like to actually resolve the card mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so this deck does end up being changed due to sword online so fortunate about that uh, for next two deck, there, there won't be actually too much changes when uh, we we rise into the Sword Art Online meta, I would assume. Actually, hit the the, the Daydream deck was built specifically to counter. Yeah. <laughs> or has, has, has text already built into the deck for uh, Alice. But mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go over Player B's deck, which is my deck, uh, Slime deck. Uh, pretty stark standard deck. Uh, so if you ever see Clinton Chan's deck, which has won multiple BCSs, multiple Spring Fasts, Spring Fasts last year, he hasn't won anything yet this year. But we'll see if Chicago and New Jersey, he ends up picking up some Ws. I mean, he, he got second in Texas. So he he it, did get second in Texas. It's not winning, but you're pretty goddamn close, right? He he, yeah. he has one win, and one win. I mean, if he beat me instead of me being him, then he would have won Texas. But here we have is a pretty standard slime deck. Uh, the biggest difference that most people would note is me playing these four of this Kaijin. Uh, if you don't know what he is, he is a 4-5 level 1 when he's by himself on the board. It can be a center of stage or it can be in a side, uh, one of the left or right uh, slots. And this way, compared to how Clinton plays it, means I am not playing any red. Or besides, like the brainstorm and the stock swap, so I can't play yeah. what a lot of slime players are playing now, which is the two-one Rimuru that has the free fresh effect on it. Uh, I decided to go for Kaijin as a way to guarantee myself a plus one. Uh, in all the decks in the meta, unless they draw like a specific three-card combo, which might include slime now CX. It is pretty hard for them to out the Kaijin. Mm -hmm. So this gives me basically just insurance that this card can live. Uh, level one bo level zero bombs can't kill it either. And if you play against Hall Live, if you slam this in the center, uh, oh yeah, they, they can't it, it run just their like Aqua. Aqua and like fucking La Plus, right? Yeah, because they they don't even want to side it either. Otherwise, they're, they're swinging for zero because it's level one. So. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll probably either have to put them aside, which can get cleaned up by literally any one of your other zeros, or they'll just crash it in to your Kaijin, which gives you open lanes. This also gives you an easy way for you to go turn two uh, tri field. Mm -hmm. with, with, uh, if you like, you draw a Rick, if you have a Ricky or you have a Chloe. Uh, one thing I do know is that Clinton took out Rickies from his 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 own deck. 
Uh, he said he mainly ran Rickies as a way to get rid of anti salvage. Uh, for me, I personally like keeping the Rickies in still. I I use it as basically my fourth and fifth copy of my Chloe Zero without actually yeah. being Chloe Zeros, which means if I have uh, too much of Chloe's and Mask already, I can use Ricky to grab stuff like Combo, stuff like Brainstorm, stuff like the Shizu. You use um. The Ricky effect also has the one that lets you bounce a zero, right? Yeah, that, that's why he used it. All. No, not at all. That's why, okay. I mean, Clinton played it so that he can get around anti savage because apparently a lot of people, was, like, when he was playtesting, was playing, like, Kanko against him or something like that with anti salvage. Mm -hmm. but, but that's why he took it out. But I, I, it, I might, can't... it might help, like, in future BCSs, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't know how many players are going to be playing Psychono. Um,. Psychono has like almost like the same fucking profile as Kanko. It, right? It's it's the, basically the same except it's a front. Yeah. It's a one case. It's low zero. It's definitely global five. Mm -hmm. uh, another difference is I played Memory Counter. I think this card's ass. I this never came up once. You never you never retain board of it, so this mm -hmm. card never comes up. And how many uh, how many games did you queue into like SDS and like Quince and like you know the matchups where like memory kick counter would have mattered? Yeah, I in ideally in an ideal world you can use this to blank hit a needle finisher or you can use it to you know remove uh <clears throat> remove the board condition from SDS. But because I even though I did play into them and I, but I won at level two anyways. Uh the with the needle. Uh, sometimes they can't get bigger than any, any of your cards, so they just swing over and you can mm -hmm. never get the memory kick off anyway. And then you get 7 daily sins, they can... You usually have some open lanes already, so bouncing another one means they can easily play around uh, this, this memory kick counter. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to read this deck list, I would swap this for either a, another copy of the Shizu level 0 here, or like a anti change counter, uh, that one I would play test because I think anti change counter is also just as bad. And like this, well, so I mean, a, like you say, it's like bad, a recall. but like I, I, I did, think, I did. What am I? Might come up more than memory kick because <laughs> you said like you you got got by like uh, I remember just talking. You got got by anti change counter in one of your games. So yeah, there's one game yeah. where I I lost my my only loss. One one of the, my big mistake was not playing around anti change counter, which led to me eventually losing and it's because i'm not honest, i didn't even realize slime had an anti-change counter so like you know yeah because no one played it because it, it was ditch two yeah and then because we're not playing the 2-1 rimru that gained 6k against level threes we need an answer to early plays which mm -hmm. is this you slot and just ranga adachi pretty standard yeah. Yeah, the rest of the deck is uh, as you, as you expect for slime. Yeah, it's just you, you send shit to memory, mm -hmm. send shit to memory, and then you heal. Pretty standard. Yep. And you try to do your best to re refresh a good timing, which helps because mm -hmm. Chloe's are two cards out of your deck. She's a combo, and I mean, you, you have you have like what? How many cards to help you like try heal or like if you play in conservative? dual field of level one you have like what 10 cards that like enable your level one for you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you have like the rickies you have the chloe's you can draw the masks like you know and then you just like naturally draw the shizus so yeah four copies of your finisher on your level one combo plus five and copies Ramos, yeah. five five copies of characters can grab it rams can grab it if it's in your bin and then your mask you have lots of ways to access it also another thing i like about kaichin was just more le ye yellow more yellow, so you can get color easily get color fixed for Ramus level one. Oh yeah, I mean that card becomes useless after like turn zero, right? Or like not turn zero, but like turn one. Yeah, this card so. it just the card just ends up being a three K attacker, which is still respectable for clearing the border zero. But afterwards, it's just uh, stuff. It, it, it sometimes I just summon off Ramus if I have an empty lane. If you want to get more memory, or I stock yeah. put underneath Potion Maker as stock. Yeah. And then the last deck, which is probably the spiciest of all our decks, uh, no one had this deck on the radar coming into uh, the actual tournament, except for our small circle of friends, both of the Burn 1 people and Riaz, but we have the 8-door Bang Dream playing Christmas Christmas Day. 
Go ahead. Okay, so to be fair, I think the re one of the reasons why they don't have a lot of this, like, on the radar is because you gotta understand, so, like, Christmas costumes are impossible to find, and if you find them, they're, like, 50 bucks a pop. Same with Arsa. I, like, I, I think I've seen, like, Encore Decks profiles now be, like, Houston Spring Fest, like, fucking, you know, like, regional uh, winner's deck without Arsa, because how am I gonna find this Arsa card? <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, just... Just so you know, I'm an OG. Where's my Arsa? I, ha I have I have an Arsa right here. But thanks to Kevin's Locals for uh, letting me borrow his deck anyway. Yeah. Alright, so I think... Um, so this deck is more built towards the, like, counter Alice meta. Um, I played a little bit of, like, the... More, like, the new... Uh, oh, hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, Ollie. You're also an OG. Uh, I played a little bit of, like, the Anniversary 8-door uh, stuff. I found the Yukino to be, like, completely unplayable because I played into, like, you know... I played into the meta matchup, so, like, you play against uh, Quince. Quince drops the 1-1 one, one that can't be reversible, and you're like, holy shit, like, you know, I can't resolve my level 1 combo. How do I play the game? Uh, you play into Kanata Marin. Kanata Marin drops, like, you know, their, you know, double or triple Kanata, and you're like, holy shit, how do I play the game as just, just like, you know, pure, like, Anniversary uh, Bang Dream? And then uh, fucking Hanson in the burn one chat just hits me up and is like, Nico, 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 like, like, listen, dude, you're playing it wrong. Like, you're playing eight door wrong. Here's the eight door list. I built it specifically to counter Alice. However, I was like, I was looking at it. I'm like, yeah, this isn't too bad. And like, you, you, like, you actually have pretty decent matchups into like other stuff. So I picked it up for Houston. And that's what I just uh, decided to play. Um, I think the most, the cards that put in, like, so much more work is, um, in the meta is, like, Sayo Bottom Decker Bomb is, like, fucking, it, it, like, that's a terrorist. That is a terrorist card. Like, if you, I didn't go turn one, I think, I think I went turn one once in Houston, but, like, you open turn one with this card, you drop it in the center lane, like, how do people respond to you, right? You play against Hall Live, you're like, how the fuck do I play my Aqua? <laughs> you know, like, that type of stuff. Like, you play against Quince, you're like, I, like, if, especially if they're playing the runner, like, how the fuck do I play the runner against this card? Like, this this card's a terrorist. <laughs> so, I think Sio Bomb put in a lot of work. Uh, the one zero tie Suicider is also really, really funny. Um, once again, it's more built towards the counter Alice, uh, but, like, I unfortunately didn't have a lot of, like, Quince matchups, specifically in Houston, but, like, even in a little bit of testing, you can do, you can do, like, really funny stuff, like, you know, on attack with Tae, uh, pay one, level down their unreversible, Sio bomb it, or like uh, it. an example of like a top 8 match I was playing against uh, the Kaguya list that runs uh, the 2-1... What's her name? I? Is it I? I, I Hayasaka? Oh, from Kaguya? Yeah, yeah, the Hayasaka, oh, yeah. yeah. So you can just literally be like, yo, that's a really cool Hayasaka you have. What if I just like pay one and kill it though? You know, that type of stuff. <clears throat> so yeah, he, he's already running this in Houston. Once... Uh, Sword on the Lane comes out, this card even becomes more of a playmaker in that deck. Yeah, because then you can just, like, your opponent puts out the fucking board of, like, 2-1 Alice's, and you're just like, that's really cool. What if I just, like, pay one and kill your Alice, though? Basically. Yeah. Um, the 2-1 Remy was pretty decent in practice. The problem is, like, in Houston, I can't speak for it too much because I didn't fight a board-based deck, but theoretically, this card allows you to kill a card or kill like a conata or kill like you know higher level standby target and then like allows you to pump like you know six thousand to like you know seven thousand five hundred power to another lane probably like a christmas cost me to let you kill another lane of like a board based deck so that's why that's in there <laughs> well cost me gets seven five with cx six five without cx so yeah. Yeah. yeah um it's usually like it floats around 8k um because you're probably going to have at least one of the brainstorm out in the back row so, mm -hmm. what about this Thai EP? This didn't, didn't get much. This oh. did not see much play. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this card is also really good. Um, I didn't like. I don't think I like. I noticed this card putting in a lot of work, but this card is extremely good. Uh, pay to heal. Uh, if you have uh, two or less CXs, it's always pretty nice. The onk, like, if you think about it, this, is almost like a like a permanent like uh two soul card on your B or on your board unless they like hard remove it with like clock stock bottom decks you know stuff like that because a lot of the times like even if a, like even if you go like um 
if you can keep, like keep one other lane alive, um, if they kill you on the backswing, you can just be like, okay, cool. Like you know, I have two of my cards reversed. I just pay one, sack my other lane that's going to waiting room anyway, and then this card just comes back. So the tie is really, really good. <laughs> and la the last um, spicy option we got. I, I think the two is like just the right amount of number. The Remy Chaser you can probably change. Uh, that was probably a mistake in general. Um, I never fought against seven deadly sins either. So like this never came up to where I needed to like block an Escador attack. So uh, um, the Remy change is just mainly just there because of like Escanor and like certain other things. Um, you can probably just like cut that if you're wanting to like net deck the list. You can probably just cut that and like. Uh, replace it with like something else for like more consistency but since we're going to the alice anyway you just keep it in there so. <laughs> no counters in this deck besides uh this deck any thoughts of picking up like a maybe we could oh, counter? Yeah. Uh, the level three events are really funny it's called living but dead <laughs> oh this guy always says it every single time he plays down I, I... Um, <laughs> this is the best card <laughs> because you get to uh because your costume is draw um you just get to draw into this event naturally um mm -hmm. so you can always just kind of like sort of threaten this um the stock threshold for Triple, uh two costumes uh, like two of the new costumes is only three so you just you just kind of like almost always be able to threaten like one lane of just like you know neg three soul so you just gotta get to blank a lane the only thing that really counters this right now in the meta is like escanor and uh god what's that card you replace it the polka the i no, no it's the i yeah. yeah the ima that gets to double level down but like if this card lives and gets to like you know resolve its combo um you just kind of like yeah you know, like especially like I'm not good saying it's guaranteed it helps you draw into this. You can just like cut the damage in a lane in half. Uh this is like a Your level three is like really good at like two turn killing somebody. Your costume is also just fucking huge for no reason. Yeah, your costume is just 13k on attack by itself before like any power pumps. So um, and then the classic, uh, this didn't come up in, like, any of my games, actually. But you're always able to threaten Stocks while Fumio, which is always, like, a pretty disgusting combo, so. Stocks while is probably more, like, powerful. At least, I, yeah, in my... The, well, the Fumio being a global 15 probably comes up to make sure Kasumi gets over things. Yeah, unfortunately, like, we'll talk about this later on, I'm guessing, in our, um, uh, in our stream when we go over our matchups but like uh i i fought zero board based decks so like i never had to really play the arsa down just for power pump so it's kind of where we're at on that all right let's go over our opponents that we play against and how, how our games ended up turning out <clears throat> do we want to go this one person hash out all, all nine at once or do you want to go one at a time going round by round uh, uh, we can probably go like real quick, just like one at a time, so we can do like round one, round two, so on and so forth. Yeah. All right, we got. Yeah, so we'll just go like ABC. So I'll even start it off. All right. Yeah. So uh, my round one opponent was against Eight Pants AOT. Um, no, uh, no disrespect, but uh, it, I'm pretty sure our opponents like didn't know how to play the game. Uh, at least I do think did. they were newer. They were like yeah, they newer were probably at the game, new like, players. Or they were like returning after a very long break. Uh, yeah, so I played against A Pants AOT. I was a little scared at first because it was core. Uh, means I would have to deal with Armin, which would have been really obnoxious. Uh, he was running then, Armin and wait, he was playing no, Armin it, and I was I was scared if he was running core. Oh, okay. Uh, but he would by turn. But I saw the peak brainstorm, so I knew it was A Pants. Uh, he made a f quite a few misplays uh, when he was playing. He played down his Levi Ricky and tried to blind stock off of it, uh, which is not how that card works at all. A uh, couple few times he tried to brainstorm four when his brainstorm hits for five, so I had to correct him on that. Uh, and then the other one I I, I noticed uh, sadly, which maybe a little sad was um, he tried to three stock encore the one zero Connie, uh, which was also a card you can't do and uh i had to 
unfortunately let him know that the card was errated. <laughs> and I was not trying to lie to him that he could not encore his 1 0 Kami. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was pretty uneventful game besides that. Uh, he had he had a really bad game, apparently, because yeah, I think he swung twice a turn uh, oh, for shit. most of the game. Uh, Did he try to resolve like Reiner level he, uh, one at all? He resolved a single Reiner level one. Uh, he got a single Armor Titan level three, uh, but I was like two one, and he also resolved it with a two card deck, so it burns zero. Because I think he, um, I think he thought he got to go with through into his next deck, but that's not how that works. Yeah, it's like yeah, that's definitely not how that works. Uh, and then I just killed him with Soul Dash from from like mid two. <laughs> so that's how that game went. Your eight pants AOT guy was also right. He also screwed up his finisher, didn't he? I remember seeing that. Yeah, he uh, he tried to resolve Armor Titan. Uh, he he flipped the last two cards of his deck over. Uh, and then started refreshing his deck. I'm like, uh, you, you can only look at the two. It's you can only reveal what's left. It's in your reveal. Deck. Yeah, it's a reveal, yeah, not yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz he thought I was like, "Oh, I have to refresh my deck." But then no, you can't refresh cuz you haven't cards haven't left the deck yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know. It is what it is. All right. You just go over all your matchups then. Just oh, we're, oh, we're just doing it. I'm just doing going all. Well, of no, okay. I would think like you, like we're we're just doing round one first. Right? Yeah, okay, okay. we're just okay. doing next. Like Kev, all right, yeah. okay. all right. My round one pool, a stand by Quintuplets. I I think he was probably the most uh, familiar with White Schwartz out of all of them. He there wasn't too many mistakes that my opponent did. Uh, nothing was super inventful. What happened? went on we had a prolonged level zero game uh none of us ended up tri fueling and we had some pretty good early cancels so i think we had like two or three turns of level zero and then uh when he hit level one uh i was at least able to grab the Sh shizu Semakai to my hand and with that i was able to answer some sword i think level one he ended up like trip a double triggering standby though so his his board was literally like uh, two level twos in the back, two level ones in the front, and level two in the lane. But thanks mm -hmm. to or like no, he has two level twos in the front, and then one and then one level one in the front. But because one of them didn't have combo, they're only seven k. So I was able to do a play where I slam CX, I I side with the Shimakai, pump one to beat over the one one, and then just naturally crashed into the two two. The next turn I can revive the Shimakai and then answer his uh, two twos again. The turn after. <laughs> uh, outside of that specific play, uh, I got some good cancels through. Uh, eventually, uh, pushed him to three early, but he wasn't able to resolve much combos. I think he only resolved resolve single combo, which pushed me to three. And I was able to end up uh, going double combo into him and then burning him, burn four wins the game, you know? Yeah. Wow, shot's pretty good, dude. <laughs> I think this is the game I didn't open Kaijin in either. That's why it was like a slower game. Mm -hmm. We were just trading blows for blows. Yeah. Uh, so for my game, I played against uh, Standby Door Kaguya. This was like a slightly uh, higher rarity uh, deck list, uh, but same thing as like uh, my other uh, teammates. Opponent didn't seem to be like too, too experienced with the game. He made a couple like really weird misplays. Uh, my only real notes, unfortunately, are just like, uh, <laughs> I cannot cancel and my opponent can cancel. Uh, so... Uh, the, uh, the only thing I really noted is I wasn't really able to find my like I just didn't cancel until like I hit like two five, so I was just eating like just eating pretty much every single bit of incoming damage. Um, even with level three Kasumi, I held the Akko from like mid like level, well pretty much like from my level two turn onwards, just in case I was able to draw a climax. But I was never able to draw a climax because I'm bad at this game. Um. <laughs> uh, so I was never able to really, like, even, like, draw into a Climax, slam a Climax down. Uh, the only thing I could, like, really mention in our game is uh, our opponent managed to stand by out the 3-2 Kaguya, the one that works on the door finisher. And uh, I think I managed to crash, like, one or two cards into it, and he never resolved just, like, the the Resonate with Hayasaka burn for one. 
I'm not sure if he was just like newer and not familiar with that effect or think or maybe he thought that effect was specifically tied to the climax combo or something but like I think just because he didn't resolve that I got to have an extra turn even though it didn't matter I still lost um yeah uh lost that game surprisingly the only games I did lose outside of like uh grand finals was against Kaguya so <laughs> Copy too strong. How'd, uh, how'd you okay. end up feeling? To be fair, um, I didn't put. I played like a different deck in uh, Strictly Broken Locals the previous day. My only loss that day was also to Kaguya. <laughs> Kaguya was like my <laughs> Kaguya was like my kryptonite that weekend. All different builds of Kaguya too. Wasn't even. It just was the same yeah. Build. It was all different builds, which is like really surprising. How how did your ment how was your mental after round one loss? Like, like my mental yeah. like my mental game yeah. i think i said like sorry kevin like i, I like i i just like exploded <laughs> um my mental game usually like uh the mental stuff for me doesn't you kick in until i have like two or three like real bad losses in a row so i was just like all right shake it off we'll just you know move on to the next one we'll we'll go from there that was the voice game of voice games yeah. <laughs> all right round two all right so round two i played into uh i believe it was the mirror uh i was pretty much as you would expect the mirror to go uh we just kind of kept slamming damage uh into each other i drew the global early uh, either on my second or third turn uh so i was pretty much always over his board and i was able to like keep like one to two lanes a turn uh and then i refreshed in the next deck pretty compressed not like super compressed but like in a pretty decent spot uh and then my opponent just uh just just fucking explodes on me and then deals like seven damage Ooh. six to seven damage straight right after i refresh so like all right that's pretty cool uh but i luckily though i was able to cancel two of the attacks and push them to like mid two but i was still in like probably on my last turn uh my hand was pretty much set up he actually gave me uh he gave me a direct lane uh and i had the bouncer in hand and two escanors so i had double escanor directs so like I, if i could find the choice i was pretty confident i could kill him uh unfortunately uh, finding the choice in that deck sometimes is an impossible ask. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got, I, 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 Elaine brainstormed and Elaine Ari sued, um, several times to find, uh, either the choice or to get the choice in my bin so I could climax swap into it. I did end up getting the choice into my bin with the art, with the, with the brainstorm. Um, could not find a climax, uh, off the, the actual brainstorm. It would either whiff or I wouldn't see a climax off the top three to, uh, until I got to the point where I had a five card deck left with three climaxes in it. I have an Ari Sue in my hand, slam down Ari Sue, reveal clean, mill it, ditch a card, draw clean. The last three cards of my decks were, were, were climaxes. Ooh. Uh, so I could not combo. I just swung and prayed. He canceled and he killed me on, on his turn. Hmm. <laughs> all right my round two was probably my scum my 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 scummiest win of the day like the, it was supposed to be a game take that those anyway. i should have lost by end of winning uh it's one it's one of those it was like the only like bad game i had on slime by i still ended up winning but it was one of those games where people say what do you do if you just get pushed to level two well that's what i ended up having i got pushed from zero to two all my cx's were or like majority of my CXs were in like the bottom portion of my deck and my my level one combo even though it can mill two it did not mill up the C enough CXs and I end up only refreshing five uh, but I did scum out two cancels on the second deck even though I only had five CXs left in my deck and then through that I was able to get back into the game my opponent did have also drawn to a lot of CXs so luckily for me there he wasn't compressed either Especially with Soul Battle, and then when he hit level 3, uh, he double combo with Marin. Uh, this is IMA Marin deck. I, I assume he's just a fan of IMA. And 
eventually he double comboed, but I was still able to cancel exactly on two on his finishers and was able to scum on win, even though if one of those two stuck, I think it was like I refresh during his finishing turn and off of the fresh new deck, I was able to cancel a, a burn two and a swing for, swing for three. And I was able to scum out a win through that. Uh, so yeah, should should have been a game I lost with how bad it was going, but luckily, uh, even though I had bad cancels early, all my good cancels came in towards the end, which is what matters, really. <laughs> uh, so I ended up playing against Eight Bar Data Live. Um, surprisingly, for playing, like I had to read like almost all his cards because he played a lot of like the. Is it the set two or set three stuff? He played a lot of like the random like uh what's that witch girl like the witch loli names like Natsume or something like that. Played a oh, lot of those cards. Yeah. yeah, though I'm like I don't know what this card does, dude. This isn't like part of the meta deck, so I don't I have like no idea what your card does. Um, so he played the level one Natsume, which I think is like salvage, and it has like some other effect that I forget. And then he played uh, his. Top end was the uh, level three Yoshino from set one, which um, with a full board, it lets you neg soul and then uh, at the start of your opponent's attack phase, you can pay one, swap two characters, and then the Yoshino specifically gets 2k. Um, so he managed to neg soul twice, but I had some pretty decent cancels. So like, I didn't really like, uh, like he was always, it always seemed like he was always like half a level ahead. Um, at one point he hit like level one before me. He didn't resolve the combo for um, whatever reason. I guess he just wasn't able to draw the proper bar. Um, so what ended up happening is like he managed to Yoshino me twice, uh, but then like you know I managed to push out enough damage. I hit level three. I triple costumed him, and he just exploded from there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably not like a really good game for my opponent, but we take those. Unfortunately for minus two, so compost like yeah. Your, your level 3s and your EP just... With a CX just yeah, so he, so like, I think his only other like auxiliary finisher was the uh, Kurumi... Icy what Cell? Is it? it's like, on attack, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the pay 3, this one on yourself. attack, on no, no 5, it, yeah. No, no, the, the, I think that he was playing the Clock Self one, right? Wasn't he? No, he was, he was playing specifically, oh, if I remember, he was playing the Kurumi. He wasn't the playing the Toka. The, oh, yeah, wait, yeah, that's Kurumi. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so he was playing the on attack, pay 3, dish 1, uh, mill 5, so... Yeah, so managed to get that win. So we're one one on the board. Uh, even though Ollie manages to lose one, you know we're still we're still progressing to yeah. the uh, the winner tracker from there. We were joking about me being the carry here when I I, yeah. I had the two the two zero <laughs> versus the two one ones. Yeah. But you are the carry. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, All round right. three. Round three. I uh, played against Kanatamarin. Um, it's I've played into this matchup quite a lot. Uh, I personally think it's probably one of the better matchups for SDS. Uh, you, if you get the global, which I did, you just farm their board at zero and one. Uh, even without the global at one, you farm their board unless they can draw the climax. So you kind of just chill out. Uh, when they get to level, t which is basically pretty much what happens, uh, level two, my opponent does double Kanata, as all Kanata Marine players do. Uh, and then salvages three Marines on his, what he's at, 2-0, which was uh, quite shocking. I guess he just kind of assumed his Kantas were going to die and he wasn't going to get them back. Uh, but then, yeah, I hit two. I threw the Nanashi on the board. Um, the Nanashi always hits for me for some reason. Blessed player like that. So, killed off his Kantas. Uh hit him directly to three uh he tried to marine me uh he did yeah triple marine me i i think he hit me to like three one or three two and then i just i think i ended up like doing single escanor and a bouncer and killing him from like three one or three two mm -hmm. <laughs> all right my my round three was against du dual layers tokyo adventures and personally i think as a slime player, Tokyo Adventures is the freest of matchups you can play against. 
Dude, uh, you have a level zero stock swap. Like that, that, like, that is that is the biggest. Wrong, that is the biggest way. You have a level zero stock swap, which means you can completely turn off the entire game plan of Tokyo's Revengers as they try to stock non-triggers into their deck and into their stock, and then get a big, a large amount of stock so that it can blow you up at level three. But having a level zero stock swap means you can get rid of all those soul triggers, all those non CXs that they stack, all this clean stock that's stacked up inside their deck in their stock, <laughs> and you can basically ruin their deck state that they spent basically all game to set up for. I'm guessing you stock swap the Tokyo Avengers player. How much did you <laughs> stock swap him for? 19. <laughs> when, Holy shit. 19 <laughs> when he had like 14 in deck. I did it the second turn after he. He refre he he got through his first deck because I want I want to make sure uh, he had enough stocks so that stocks would force him to refresh. Uh, other than that, another good reason why the match was good is because they're only duelating you. You you are not taking a lot of damage, so you can spend more time to compress and and heal down. As well as your she's a combo just naturally contests the uh, the dual laners because she sw she swings for seven k. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a uh, backup. Which he unfortunately was not able to ever grab because he didn't draw the the, the sour split so uh, I'm just able to roll over the dual lane. Yeah. I think he That's did it. play a bit of Posh and Payon. He did throw down the pot the the Payon the, 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 the Pachin or is it Payon? I think it's a Payon brainstormer. And he mm -hmm. tried activating it a few times, but whiffed. So that didn't really matter. And then he just ended up going for more dual laners, building up more stock. And then at the end of the game, he's just basically like, "Yeah, I have no idea how to how to deal with this matchup because of the level zero stock swap." <laughs> I, I don't know, bro. But yeah, easiest matchup for slime to play against. Good stuff. Uh, I ended up playing against Choice Pants Bang Dreams. So he played the uh, new level one Canon Choice into the new level three You Can Pants. Um, for my notes, I have, we both played Gentleman's Vice for, like, two or three turns. Uh, so that just means we're just, like, you know, uh, you know, double-fielded, you know, tri-fielded at level zero. Just, like, swung without a climax. At one point, I made a note that, uh, he double-fielded his level one Kanon combo, if you're not aware of what that does. Um, I'm reciting from memory, maybe I'm wrong, but it's, uh, on your turn, it gets 3,000 attack, and then with the climax combo, which is a choice trigger... It gets a uh, twin drive, and it cannot, after your attack, it cannot be reversed on your opponent's turn. Um, so if you just, like, committed two of those to just killing two of my, like, random cards off of the board, um, I think I was just kind of, like, getting slightly more compressed than he was, getting ahead of him in damage. Um, when I was a 2-5, at one point, he committed a, a double Yukina, which is, like, I believe it's... Uh, it has a different mode. It's like if you direct attack, I think it's like similar to last shot, which is just burn four. And then if you like, if you reverse something, you can like, I think it's like pay one, burn two, something similar to mm -hmm. that. I'm not like uh, super familiar with that card. Um, So he almost killed me from two five after I was like super compressed. Uh, But naturally, thankfully, thankfully, initially my compression spooked me. I think it sent me to like three, four, three, five. Um, but then I managed to rebound and then just like uh, cost me him from game, which is just like, you know, after attack, pay two, burn two. So we got there. Uh, so I got the W. Uh, so I think we're 2 1 at this point. Uh -huh. Overall, team score is 3 0 at this point. I think the yep. next like round four is also like another one where we cling swept. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. Uh, going on to round four, uh, I played against uh, Eight Door Fate. Uh, I was not ready to run into this deck uh, this far into the tournament, but it's uh, it was uh, Peke from the Discord server. Uh, we ended up going against their team. Uh, it was a pretty uneventful game early on. Uh, we kind of just kept trading board back and forth. Uh, I I'm pushing a bit more damage, but he did get some good cancels early on. Um, at two, he tried to establish uh, a board of like early play Ilias to like try, I assume, to try and sit on it. Uh, unfortunately, SDS is not a deck that you can do that against very easily. Uh, so we slammed down the Nashi. Of course, the Nashi always hits. Uh, killed his Ilias. Um, he got to free fresh and, and 
um, stabilized a little bit, but couldn't really give her the damage. Hit him to three. He tried to hail Mary. Um, I see tail me. Uh, when I was like high two, uh, of course, Icy Tail never kills anyone. Uh, so I cancel most of the damage to end up at like low three. Uh, and I think that was another game where <laughs> I just kind of like converted a three card hand into like single Escanor plus Bouncer plus Shitter and killed him for like three one or three two. Did your Escanor at least hit a stock soul? I think it hit a soul trigger. Okay, just a normal soul trigger. All right. Yeah. All right, and uh, my opponent was Pecky's good friend Space Cowboy, who's in the chat right now. Shout out to him. Uh, he played his darkness, uh, the Wind Choice Corner Super deck. Pretty spicy tech. A uh, pretty spicy deck to play in this tournament. I uh, he was able to get to three zero at that point. Eventually, he came in ninth. Pretty good for him. Uh, against my matchup against him. Uh, I think it was turn one. It was one of those few few games that I was able to get Kaijin off turn one. Uh, he could not answer it, but he did play this Darkness card that on attacking mill two and he hit a CX gets two two soul gets plus two soul. So oh, yeah, that card. He like swung for five against me at level zero, and I ate it. And I was and I was sitting there getting spooked out. Uh, I hit level one quickly, but I did not go for combo turn. I knew what the deck did somewhat. So I was saving my combo so I can answer Darkness, because I remember correctly, Darkness level 1 combos were sitting, sits at like 6k uh, cross turn. So if I knew my combo first, I might not be able to answer his combos after. Which I did that. So I, I just swung with uh, like Chloe and another Kaijin, and he gets up his triple combo, I come back with my, tri my triple combo to answer him. And then he hits level 2, and the unfortunate thing for him, because he's playing the Darkness deck, he was only able to do one merge into the 3-2 Darkness early play, and he was not able to find his choice trigger. So, because of that, uh, he was not able to push damage at level 2 against me, as much as he would have liked. And, especially since I ended up casting quite a bit too, so having that uh, cross turn to cancel burn 1s would have helped. Uh, I end up do playing down my Adachi to answer his darkness early play, just to make sure he doesn't like find the CX turn after and roll me over. Uh, afterwards, he just goes for awkward early plays and play. And he plays like the uh, two one Aqua that gives uh, bomb that kick. So he he was actually mm -hmm. trying to play around my memory condition pretty well. Uh, he was able to knock out a couple of my combos and a couple more of my EP healers. One thing I found out was that. If I don't have a CX or the Shimakai, my my early play could not answer his awkward early plays behind the Aqua Assist, which is kind of awkward. I pl I quickly played him down because because I was thinking in my head I'll, I'll be able to answer his awkward early plays. Then I realized I was five hundred under, so I ended up just crashing my board. And then he clocks he bomb decks kicks kicks my uh, my EP healer. But because I have open lanes now, you know I just cancel at a good compression state at that point. And yeah, yeah. by the time he does get combo, it's a bit too late. And he tried to keep me out of uh, keep me out of uh, memory condition for my finisher, but I had just enough stock to use mask as well as uh, to get my last my fourth memory as well as to be able to do like either it was either double combo plus uh, dwarf king or triple combo. I can't remember at this, at this point. But I was able to combo and finish him off there. All right, so for my matchup, I'm th I think, unfortunately, this is, like, my shortest write-up, and I don't remember too much about this game. I just have, uh, so, uh, I played against Don Machi, just the standard, um, you know, Bell level one into, uh, what's her name? Hestia. Hestia, Hestia. yeah. Hestia level three. Um, so we had a pretty equal, like, game one, uh, but then my opponent refreshed, and then he exploded. Uh, I think he, like, refreshed, and then he was, like, almost immediately out, like, you know, the classic, like, you know, refresh, like, you know, seven, uh, and then, like, immediately after you refresh, you're out, like, you know, three or four climaxes. I think it was, like, one of those games. So, um, after that, he was, he just kind of exploded after his refresh, and I was just able to push soul damage for game. Um, I unfortunately can't remember too, too much about this game, but, uh, that's, uh, what I do remember is he, uh, for his first, like, we were pretty even first deck. His second deck was not very good. 
<laughs> All right, round five, our first L of the day, our only L of the day. <laughs> yeah, so I had to play the mirror again. I played against the Broderick from Strictly Broken, uh, also a fellow Chicago player. Uh, pretty normal game at the beginning. Uh, we traded cards. Uh, he's on the Liz Stock Soul build, so he kind of, uh, ends up by f fielding more shitters, uh, into my level one board. So it, um, I do get some lanes to live. <laughs> uh, so I resolve combo. I swing, I take him to like one six or two zero, I think. Uh, and then I refresh again pretty compressed uh and then brodick proceeds to take his turn uh slams down a stock soul uh triggers a stock soul uh, uh and then i think triggers um the other two swings i don't know exactly what happened but i know i proceed to then eat nine straight damage uh Ooh, that's pretty after, bad after <laughs> refreshing at level two decently compressed uh so yeah so i'm at like three two to my opponent's two zero it's the mirror so it's pretty rough uh i then take my turn i hit him to like two four but uh i had to feel like an escanor and use the liz healer to like heal down uh to like a manageable damage and then i proceed to like pass turn because i'm thinking maybe if i don't, if he if I don't if he doesn't kill my Escanor that I have to field down, I can maybe kill him from two four, uh, with a good enough setup. And I didn't want to hit him like two six because he could like you know do the bullshit like overplay clock and then overplay Escanor to hit three and then kill me. Uh, turns out it didn't matter. Uh, he f had the two one Escanor and he got back the um, Diane EP, so he killed my lanes anyway while still healing down. Uh, so I'm like, at that point, I basically lost the game. Uh, I just swing, 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 um, hit him to three, and then uh, I die because I'm at like three, four at that point. I, I, I've just basically lost, lost, because uh, you don't get to make that kind of comeback in the mirror. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what happened. All right, and my matchup was against Clinton from. I, he's like an honorary strictly broken member. He's not like an official strictly broken member, but because he always plays with Broderick, he's like honorary. And if you don't know who Clinton is, he is the pants he is the book. Chicago king. Yeah, yeah, he is the king of Chicago, and he is the pants book slime master. He's the one who put this deck on anyone's radar, and he's the one who who's top multiple and even came top eight last worlds with pants book slime. And in my matchup against him, because he plays more Chloe and he because he plays Rico, he tried playing. He was able to get more memory than me. Uh, I remember I, one thing he hit. One of his reactions was, "I did slam them the Kaijin," and he was like, "What is this?" Because this is not <laughs> standard with his deck. And he realized he had no way to answer it. Uh, I did try to level lock him in zero, but unfortunately, you know, he hit Springstorm grabs like a Rico. Rico is into another playable, and I was not able to punish him for for uh, playing down some zeros, or I was not able to uh, level lock him, and he punished me for trying to level lock him. So I could have gone for like a triple swing. Uh, in this in instance, he ended up hitting level one first again. Uh, he is able to get not, and he was able to get uh, a potion maker first. Uh, getting potion maker as fast as possible in that mirror does help a lot because it. Accelerates your uh, compression. I played more towards Ramrus giving me memory, but he played more towards uh, just spamming more masks, spamming more Chloe's, and he didn't get more memory against me. And one of the biggest mistakes I made was because I saw his deck list multiple times throughout last year. I and I and I know how a slime player usually plays. I made the assumption in my mind that he not that he does not play anti change counter. And because it's a dish two anti change counter, so and you don't really win board much, so it's like pretty costly to actually play. So I never assume, and I never saw it throughout the game. So I never assumed he was on anti change counter. But the moment, yeah, you told me he like he like fucking held it from like Mulligan, right? Yeah, he like one of the early draws. He he like held an anti change counter. So 
when he early played his board, I early played mine and had the Adachium board, and I was going to answer his uh, early play with my Adachi. What ended up happening was he actually changed my early play because I, I did not play around it, of course. I wanted to uh, Adachi first. I don't know, I would just tunnel vision in on Adachi first instead of playing around anti chain counter because my mind was like, yeah, it's like who, play, who plays who, who plays anti change counter, counter yeah. in the slime deck. So he blindsided me completely, saved the damage, removed the stock from from my playability. I could have got that damage in easily. I could have got that extra stock, and then eventually his compression just outbeat mine. Uh, he was able to stay at two. I tried double comboing. Uh, I was like, I need. I, he has like four CX left in deck, which is like with like a sixteen card deck or something like that. That's like. Burn floors better win me games, and unfortunately did not. He was able to cancel four of my burns, uh, four of my five instant attacks. Yeah, that was my only loss to the guy who created the deck. All right, so I ended up playing against UA. He was on Memory Hall. Why specifically? Uh, he was on uh, Corona Choice into uh, Mari level three. Um, we had a pretty slow game at the start. Uh, the Sayo bottom decker put in a lot of work this game, uh, denying him memory condition for his like early play healer. Um, I unfortunately couldn't draw enough, uh, like almost any climaxes. Uh, to uh, I, at one point he was like in a really bad deck state, and I wasn't able to punish him because I wasn't able to draw a climax. Um, but then you know, Yue unfortunately hit like the classic Y Schwartz dilemma of like triple triggering. He ended up like you know like refreshing triple triggering he has like like you know two or three climaxes off the deck um i'm able to still push him to like three six because i play down this funny one of tie ep that lets me like on attack pay three i think it's ditch two burn three um so i sent him from like mid level two to like uh, level three anyway because he was just out so many climaxes uh he tries to triple um mari me on the backswing uh, i eat a lot of the damage which is surprising but he's not able to close it out, and then, you know, at that point, I only really need to deal one damage, so I kill him on the backswing. Um, so I managed, I closed my game out, but unfortunately, uh, both Ollie and Kevin lose theirs, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, um, at this point, we're round five, we're 4-1, still feeling pretty good, so we're just going on to the next round. That was uh, just the big bang play, you know, we did that just so that we can... Uh, dodge, dodge the yeah, yeah, we, we, Exo <laughs> curse. We, we, yeah, we beat we beat the Exo curse. We, we like you know we just get a better pairing in top eight. That was the plan. <laughs> All I know is that as long as you don't r lose round six, we can get into the next round. as probably third, yeah. at least top four. So most likely won't verse you and them. Oh, Nico died. Yeah, Nico had to go do something real quick. All right. With that being said. Oliver, you can get, talk about your last Swiss round. All right, my last Swiss round, I played against uh, Pants Book Slime, the Clinton deck. Um, pretty miserable game, I would say. Um, he got really good cancels in at one. I tried to, you know, do the SCS thing of like triggering souls and stock souls for like fours and fives. Uh, he would, he it did not work. He would, he canceled a lot of damage uh and unfortunately i did not cancel a lot so i got shoved pretty early um level two most of the same i mean i i uh, i did get to um hold board because slime without a climax uh actually cannot answer uh sts's board at all um so i i got to stabilize a bit but unfortunately you just kind of proceed to keep canceling uh, and I think I, I think I died when my opponent was, uh, still at like two, five, two, six. Uh, I, I tried to go for the, uh, sick Hail Mary of, um, cause I had two open lanes of double Escanor, um, uh, with direct lanes. Uh, but unfortunately I did not trigger any stock souls and he canceled everything anyways. Uh, so then he just proceeded to kill me cause I was at like three, five or three, six at that point. Classic slime to you, Escanor. Yeah, I, I did, I did just cancelled. Uh, what, what can I do, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, my matchup was against Two Soul, Stock Soul, both three. Like, they played the Two Soul twins and into the. Uh, was it Sally? I think her name was the, the blonde girl that can bottom deck your cards. 
yeah. whatever. One of, the, one of those anti-meta both free decks that some people play. Uh, unfortunately, I was not playing meta, so it didn't really work out. But he had a pretty unfortunate game. Uh, turn one, he only played down the uh, like the Komei, the on reverse. You can check three in the ICX. Answered it quick, pretty easily with my Kaijin. Turn two, or I, I also tri tri field it, but he cancelled enough to be stuck at level zero. And then turn two, unfortunately, because he was level stock and his brainstorm did not hit, all he had what to swing with was just one brainstorm. And when I saw that, that he was level, he had he was clogged his hand, and he did not do 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 much damage to me. And I still I still retained my tri field, and I was already at eight hand. I just punished him, slammed down a book, CX, and just, you know, triple swing. He, he gets pushed all the way to uh, mid two. He goes to his combo. He plays down triple two so combos. Uh, I only eat one of them, but they leveled me up so he got some resources back. Uh, then I triple comboed. My triple combo pushed me to refresh. And he ended up uncoring two of his characters just as his only playables. I don't really know what the, the, the two soul combo really does. I think when I level up, he gains like a salvage and a stock or something like that. And then on his turn, he goes for triple combo again with two soul. But because I refreshed with pretty well, I just triple canceled his two soul swings. And he got no resources out of that and then ended up falling very behind. Because he was already like over a level behind. Now he's resource behind a resource as well. And it was a simple closeout from there. One of my few opponents that got pretty like annoyed at me in that match. Because <laughs> I cancelled most of his two, two soul swings. I think I cancelled uh, five out of his six two soul swings. You give lessons on how to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, how do we get that good? Yeah. <laughs> like how do you do that consistently because a lot of the times like if i ever fight like stuff like that i just kind of like eat like a level and a half of damage and i'm like oh shit what do i do now <laughs> don't trigger your cxs i mean it helps that i, that I play sense. chloe 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 is a good card if you don't trigger chloe helps you get rid of a lot of cards from your first deck even mm -hmm. before you combo and then once you hit level one and you can't combo a lot of times you can't hit the refresh the first deck refresh off your level one combo with some brainstorms. Yeah. And the last twist round for you. Okay. So I fought against eight pants bang dream. Fun fact, I'm fairly certain this deck was almost maxed. Um so he ran Sio level one from uh I think it's Bang Dream Volume 2, not the like girls band party, but just uh the anime volume two. So he ran the Sio level one, which is like I think like on attack blind stock or bounce back into the new Yukina Pants, which is uh, gets different modes depending on whether direct attacks or uh, manages to reverse stuff. Um, he unfortunately kind of exploded again. <laughs> uh, his first deck was, uh, he was like in a pretty all right-ish state. He was out a lot, but he was still like canceling a decent amount. Uh, but then he refreshed and he like, you know, he, he, he just exploded. Um, and he would just wasn't able to keep up, uh, keep up on a damage race. I managed to heal down. He unfortunately did not manage to heal down. Um, and I was just able to seal it out with uh, the Kasumi level 3. So, thankfully, we are now 5-1. 5-1, guaranteed, top cut. Uh, deck check came in. All of our decks are good. Our slaves, on the other hand, were not good. <laughs> okay, thank God, dude. Why are, Why do you use character sleeves, Kevin? Bro, that was the sleeve. Okay, so so I borrowed a deck from a friend. He gave me some over sleeves and some with some character sleeves. Uh, I know people don't like using character sleeves just because they, they prefer just using brand new clean sleeves. But I was too lazy <laughs> to buy new sleeves and resleeve them. So my judge told me to basically resleeve my entire deck because I had some damage damage sleeves that was like there's like some damaging on the side side siding, which made it so that you, you could sort of tell what what they were or the six yeah but then, I remember when you like specifically try to like resleeve your over sleeves <laughs> and then like immediately you were just like holy shit like you can't do this because even you were able to find like these these cards are almost like pseudo marked because like the new sleeves were like 
you know, way, too, way new. too different from the yeah, yeah. way too clean because they're brand new compared to the new sleeves. So I ended up having to go buy new sleeves. Uh, all over here, he, he was just a monkey when he was saving his deck. Yeah. I, I, okay. uh, I got Fun monkey, fact, yeah. guys. I ended up having to re-sleeve both Ollie's and Kevin's deck because these people do not know how to fucking sleeve a deck with Dragon Shields. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Mine were Katanas. Everyone yours were Katanas, katanas were but yours were still like, you still did a shitty job sleeving, my yeah, guy. Yeah, well, dude, I'm just, you have to have, like, surgical precision to put these cards in these sleeves, dude. Surgical precision? What? <laughs> I, like, I can, I, like, because I, I, I opened the, the, the slit open to slip the card in, and I, I put too much pressure, and it caused a dent in the top of the sleeve, and the judge told me to stop being a monkey. <laughs> He did Shout specifically. I think in those words, tell you to stop. Yeah, Simu, uh, Simu, I believe word for word told me don't sleeve like a monkey. <laughs> all right. With like... that being said, sleeves all done. We're a bit worried because our would have been top eight opponents were, was Riaz's team, which we know mm -hmm. Riaz is two time world champion. They can't end up coming. Well, they end up coming fourth, but they're, they're still pretty good players. Uh, but they ended up having a DQ in top cut. Because someone had 51 cards in their deck. And we did not play them. And then we ended up playing with a different group of people from California. Uh, do pretty we cool wanna, people. Do we even want to cover that? So it was like, so like what? The first group had 51 cards. The ninth group or the ninth place wasn't there. So then they had to move on to the 10th place team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it, it was it was pretty wild. Top The top eight cut was pretty wild. We ended up spending a lot of time just sitting around waiting for top eight to start because of all that. But yeah, so our top eight opponent, people from California, I don't really know their name. There's like one girl and two guys. Uh, really, really nice people. Uh, it was pretty nice to see them. Like before, they're doing like little fist bumps with each other, saying we got this. Too bad they didn't because we crushed them. But... They, did, they did, in fact, <laughs> not have it. <laughs> but they're they're cool people. That's they, pretty they, they, they take the loss, <laughs> loss white nicely, so it was pretty good. Oh, and yeah, the, there's a fun conversation where we're yelling at the ninth place team because. The, it, it was XPK and uh, Space Cowboy, who who are the ninth place team who left the venue, and we we're, were yelling at them to come. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about top eight. Go ahead, Oliver. Top eight. I played against eight standby quints. Uh, so I I've played in this matchup a couple of times, but, but um, it's probably not particularly great for us to guess. It's either. It's probably uh, like even or maybe slightly Quint's favor. Uh, if you do not open the global, which I did not, you have to crash into the 1-1 one -one Nino with your Meliodas, and it feels Ooh. really bad, uh, which I believe uh, did happen. Uh, so I was not doing good on board uh, for most of the game. Luckily, my opponent uh, continued to eat damage, which was good for me. Um... I think uh, I like I Nanashi'd like his board his board away. I Nanashi'd one of his characters away, um, but the problem is that because Quince is playing like two twos, like the, the actual bomb effect is pretty useless in that matchup because uh, he didn't have any level threes that I could bomb. So I was still continuing to lose board, uh, pretty even on damage for the most part, um, and then. I, I can't remember exactly how the final couple of terms went, but I do know uh, I had a I, I had a three card hand. Uh, I clock drew. I somehow drew into an Escanor and an Elaine brainstorm, uh, and then used the Elaine brainstorm to find the choice. And I I literally I, I threw my whole hand on the board, <laughs> played the climax, swung with Escanor. Uh, and hit i don't even think i had a soul trigger but he was at like three two or three three so i did the escanor swings and then like fronted with the merlin for exactly the one one <laughs> all right must be nice dude i can't help it if my opponents eat damage thanks for the carry though i appreciate it <laughs> my opponent was a standby with shoku he for his selection where he what he ended up choosing was to play uh, the 2 2 Gizlane, so that he can, and then he ended up playing the 2 1 Sophie events as his uh, replacement for the tap counter. Uh, pretty standard matchup against Mushoku, but there was some weird stuff that went on. Uh, first of all, 
he ended up going for uh during his level one turn he did the classic you know trigger on your swings your twin drive and then he get, he built the, the classic board of double gizlane double airs combo and that's where i sit there it's like all right time to crash board <laughs> <laughs> uh in that matchup i ended up uh being able to find double potion maker so i was like okay i'm just gonna build stock and just heal and then crash board i need the stock to use my mask event to grab my rammers combos and stuff like that so I, du I double potion maker, build a bunch of stock up, and then crash my board, turbo, turbo my first deck as fast as, as I could. And then once I get the second board, because I have open lanes and he's swinging for threes and fours now, I am able to cancel most of his damages. Uh, he did, once he hit level three when I was still like low two, I just got, I just came off a fresh refresh because I knew I had, I, it was one of those sort of, you know, you have three clean the deck and then you just, you just swing three times. Uh, what he did though was uh, stock swap me, trying to punish me. But in my opinion, you should not stock swap off of a fresh new deck. Uh, I yeah. assume he just did it because you're he, just hail burying at that point, yeah. right? Because it was, it was already a game where he was already like five damage down. Uh, and he was actually low in hand because what he actually ended up doing was selfing me using a self event for the anti damage twice against me. That was one of those games, like, how did you draw that many self events to be able to do that against me? Because <laughs> I, when I play that deck, I never see two coffees. Or like, it takes me so, it's so hard for me to see two coffees as self. And he saw four coffees as self against me. But yeah, because he stalks on me and I already had two potion makers. It was a simple pay to heal, pay to heal, stand on EP heal, stand on ram rest, spawn, crash board. And you just keep canceling until I won from the two. You just keep canceling. You just keep. <laughs> that's the slime player mantra, dude. You just cancel, dude. What's you the heal, problem? You heal and cancel. You cancel. <laughs> and yeah, uh, they they laughed a bit because we, we 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 the judge came and asked where our team name was, and we told them eight standby doesn't push damage, and we're like, yep, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and your last matchup. I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I ended up playing against uh, Pants Choice Kaguya. They were specifically running the 2-1 um, the Hayasaka into 3-2 Chika. Uh, so our first deck, we were both doing pretty all right. Um, I think they only managed to resolve 1-2-1 uh, one, one Hayasaka, uh, but we were going back and forth. I managed to play down the uh, the funny 1-0 Tae, which on attack, you know, you pay one, you level down an opponent's character. So I managed to level down one of their 2-1 Hayasakas that they got pretty big. Um, and just kill it with a tie. So that ended up being pretty good. Uh, but then I ended up refreshing, and then I just ended up eating, like, you know, six, seven damage out of nowhere. So I was like, whoa, what's going on there? <laughs> ah, my favorite. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, the classic. Um, I tried to heal down with a tie, but that was not enough. Uh, I thought I was in a pretty good spot. Thankfully, at this point, uh, we were going at a pretty slow pace. Both of your guys' game was done. So I had like a little bit of the pressure lifted off me, uh, but I managed to get myself down to three one. You know, I passed turn. Uh, my opponent managed to um, slam down. I think it was only one of the uh, chica that will combos with its choice, and then just a couple of beaters. And I just uh, still pretty compressed. I exploded from three one. So I was like, all right, I, you know, there's almost like, you know, if the game tells you you're not gonna win, you're just not gonna win. There's not too too much you can do. Uh, so that's how it know. is on this bitch of an earth. <laughs> yeah, that that is just how it is on this bitch of an earth. So I just kind of exploded from there. Um, but it was still fun. Uh, fun fact: uh, she did play on uh, my opponent. Did play on like the the funny uh, the Weiss Schwartz collab shirt. I was like, wait, is this your play match? She was playing on like the back of the like, the the Weiss Schwartz we go uh, collab thing, which is just like the shirt where on the back it just has like a whole Weiss Schwartz play match. So I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, even the judge wanted the picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it was just really like, good. Damn, you you got so far of playing with the shirt play mat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then, but thankfully, you know, uh, both Kevin and Ollie carried me to uh, top four. So now we're top four. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pretty hype. All right, going to top four matches. All right, so uh, top four, I played against, uh, again, eight standby Quince. Uh, this game went much better for me than the last one because uh, my opponent uh, did not hit a standby at zero. 
to uh, and played a, a single standby at one, and that was the only standby I saw uh, until I think like mid level two, because uh, he kept hitting them off brainstorms. Uh, which, you know, fine by me. Quince getting cards to hand is a lot scarier than them getting cards to board. Uh, so... I think you mean that the opposite way, but yeah. Huh? I said, I, said I think you mean that, like, scary. the opposite way. Quince getting cards to board is a lot scarier than them getting uh, yeah, cards to I, hand. Yeah, I said much less scarier, right? I thought... Uh, you, you, you said just said much scarier. Yeah, no, much, you just said much, much scarier, yeah. Yeah, it's much less scarier for them to have cards in hand than cards on the board, in my opinion. Um... Yeah, so uh, because he wasn't really able to build much of a board, uh, he had like a single 2 2 and like shitters most of the time. So, like, I was actually holding, like, I would actually hold a lane because he would swing with like the 500 power Nino every turn. Um, uh, so, I was able to like not lose too much in damage uh, opening direct lanes. And uh, he he kind of kept eating a lot too. Uh, he got like down, he got like a single one one uh, blue down, but I played down. I would but I can kill it because I play a two one, so I didn't really have to be that concerned with it. Um, mid game, I he tried to set up a board. And I proceed to nanashi it away, uh, further putting him behind. Uh, but he what he did like establish a little bit of a board. After that, so like I was kind of losing lanes and I was having a hard time drawing stock souls. So I was kind of relying on clock drawing and hitting brainstorms. Um, on the finisher turn, uh, he was unable to find a 3 2 Nino in like 15 cards uh, that he dug through. Um, so he kind of had to like rely on like vanilla swing with a 3 2 and like. A two two and a one and a one one, uh, which was not able to kill me. Uh, and then I went into my turn. Uh, I had like zero Escanor pieces at that point, not even close to fire choice. I was like, uh, but so I was like, whatever. I'll just you know, I'll hope for the best. I played down double bouncer because that was in my hand. Bounces lanes uh, and a shitter. Uh, he was at like he was at two three one I believe. Uh, so I swing with the bouncer, uh, trigger stock soul, uh, mm -hmm. eat, uh, go through the last two cards of his deck, refresh, refresh on climax, uh, and then mm -hmm. proceed to stick three more to kill him from three one with a single attack. Oh. So I'm like, that's cool. a classic, dude. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. We take those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My opponent was. A uh, seven deadly sins player. My first matchup in today. I wasn't really too scared because I assumed. Uh, I do want to match up that your set. This is the first one, so we were in Texas. This is your first opponent that was wearing a cowboy hat. That he was he wearing was a cowboy hat. I did know that. Cowboy hat. <laughs> I, I, I did call from him on his cowboy hat. It's pretty cool. That is, that is a very Texas thing, Texan thing to do. But yeah, uh, he played seven deadly sins. Uh, you know, turn one. I played on Kaizen. Turn two. He threw down triple Elizabeth Brainstorm, another attacker, and slammed down a Soxo. And that's where I was like, oh no. He, he's a powerful gamer. Triple combo. Yeah, he, he's got a hand, dude. <laughs> but what he ended up grabbing was uh, the Soxo bomb, the Escanor Soxo bomb. And I was like, oh no, because he's going to be able to remove my level 1 combo. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I did not go into combo right away. I, I saved my combos so that I can answer his uh, his Meliodas level ones. I swing swing with uh, like I think it was like double Kaijin plus plus uh, like a uh, Shizu Sh Shimakai or something like that. I don't know, just some level zeros. Able to push him level one. He he does Meliodas plays. I go to my level my level one. I did triple Shizu. I uh, answer his board. He did not go. He was not. He did not do like a. 2-1 Meliodas play, so it was pretty easy to answer his board. And then he refreshed, and he had no more playables already, because he never drew another oh. CX again. So he's so he slams down his stock soul without any copies of it in the bin, just to crash into my board. 
So my my Shizu's lived, and he did not get sent to stock. It, it was, so I was pretty fine. So I had extra stock. I just play over a Shizu, use Ramrest to summon a Shizu to the back row because I didn't have another combo myself. And I, I just started building memory with uh, Ramrest, setting the combos naturally to memory. Uh, turn after, he hits like two off Brainstorm, or like two or three off Brainstorm, and then grab Stocks of Bomb again with, while keeping in there Stocks of Bomb in the bin. Triple Stocks of Bomb me and removes my board. But you know, I just summon another Ramrus, spawn another Shizu, and Shizu go, and has that Shizu goes memory, so I'm able to still hit memory condition for the early play. I uh, go for combo that time. And then he hits like level three and he gets pretty mad at me because <laughs> I've been canceling well when I refresh eight in deck, eight CXs, but because he refreshed seven CX, he did not cancel as much. <laughs> So he was getting upset. <laughs> the one and, and, and he's like, and he's like, he, he even though he invested all this into the stocks of bombs, he wasn't able to remove my memory condition anyway. So uh, he swings, I cancel, I, I summon my early plays. He gets upset. He goes for his, he only able to go for single Escanor. Uh, pushes me to three, and he. And then I had three memory, but I had that stock to, you know, Chloe, Chloe into uh, mask, mask into my fourth memory, into triple combo, and yeah, that's like close the game. amazing play, right? It's like <laughs> Chloe into mask into your three two into search into search into just like kill your opponent, right? Yeah, Insane. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even though he tried to deny me with the stocks of mom, I wasn't able to go as planned. I still gave the conditions, and he just ran out. Run, run out of hand and and couldn't triple comp do more than the single combo because you know playing stock so bombs means you're not playing utility cards that seven deadly things you would usually play yeah but yeah. i see it worked out for him in our matchups but in that game was just unfortunate i actually wanted to call attention to that it's uh i think in a i've been to uh i think it was atlanta where i was playing eight standby quintuple it's I versed in I uh, another eight standby or not eight standby. I'm sorry. I versed another uh, seven deadly license player who was playing like four of the Escanor stock bomb, and I felt like that matchup was like really rough for him because I feel like um, the deck building and like you know the compromises you have to make in running four of that stock bomb is pretty big unless you're high rolling. Like you're you're like missing out on like various utility cards or maybe you like maybe you might even cut out like the 2 1 Meliodas like entirely mm -hmm. I don't know every single time I like seen the Escanor stock bomb I've never really felt like threatened by it I felt like slightly annoyed but at the same time I'm just like okay he's running this so like that means he must have made like a lot of like deck like you know compromising like deck decisions so I'm probably okay yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the stock stock bomb and seven of these things. But if if you think it's good, go for it. But I said, I think what you give up is not worth it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. So I ended up playing against uh, Don Machi. Uh, same, just you know the the pan store build. Uh, we were both pretty even until you hit about three. Like you know, he pops off with his combo. I pop off with my combo. I will give a shout out to this opponent. You know, thanks, guy. Uh, at the very least, you were able to table talk and banter to, like, you know, make, you know, make the game, like, somewhat enjoyable. Um, unfortunately for him, uh, what ended up happening was he sent me to, like, I think it was, like, 3-3 or, like, 3-2. And I just kind of killed him on the backswing by drawing a climax when he what, didn't have a really good deck state. Um, he had, like, knife in hand uh, at the same time. Uh he had a level zero on board, so I was like able to side him for like direct damage, and he just kind of died from there. Oh, that was the matchup where he said like he didn't have Bell, right? So he couldn't use the. Yeah, yeah. Use the, use I'm not. The, I'm nice. not. Like, I'm not like super familiar into playing against Don Machi, so I was like overplaying, like or like you know, like overthinking a lot of stuff, and then he just gave me the information of like, oh yeah, hey, by the way, like you know, Hestia knife can only be used as a counter if I have a Bell on the board. I don't have a Bell on the board. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah thankfully so we we sweep that round so now we're not a top two yeah yeah you click no do, do not give your hints to your opponents in top eight yeah. 
It's not casuals. But yeah. I mean, it's good sportsmanship, but it's like... Not necessary, not necessary. Bad sportsmanship, you just don't tell your opponent that you can't hit the knife. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, in finals, we go back against our round 5 opponent. The, t the only team that gave us our L. We, we yep. reversed them in the finals. We are a bit worried. We gave them the reverse run back this But we're time. like, yeah, it, it was easy reverse. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so played against Lord Broderick again. Uh, into the mirror. Uh, third time playing against the mirror this tournament. Uh, this game goes... So, before the round started, Broderick tells me, Man, the last two top eight games I've played have been really bad because he lost both of them. Uh, so hopefully this game will go a lot better for me. Spoilers, it did not go very well for him. <laughs> uh, level zero was mostly normal. Uh, level one, I was able to uh, um, secure the global. Uh, so my board was able to live multiple turns. Uh, unfortunately, um, despite quad Elizabething that turn, uh, Broderick was not able to do much with his hand for most of the game because uh, he could not draw stock souls after that. Uh, hmm. And he kept drawing shitters. I don't think, I think he whiffed the 1 0 the entire game. So his Wait, only. Did he just Play it down, then he was like, he just wasn't able to like spawn it from deck, or no, he just, I, he just never played it. I think, he, I think he, I think he did not have one zeros to spawn, or just That's never right. showed up in his hand. So he was constantly swinging shitters at me, which means my board lives every turn. So I'm sitting there with a full hand almost every turn, um, compressing a, a lot. I go into two. I don't actually eat shit going after straight after going two for once. Uh, so I'm just shoving damage. At one point, I triple one zero him, so I get to keep shoving even more damage while still canceling him. Um, and then it got to the point where I'm like low two, uh, and he's like low to mid three. Um, he tries yeah. to he tries to Escanor me because uh, he's just dead next turn. Uh, otherwise, um, he. Got the bounce, and then he tried to do the the cute play of Nanashiing my um my other lane to secure another direct, uh, and he hit it. And then I but I had so much stock, I just paid three encore in my body, so I could mitigate the soul damage. Uh, tried to combo. Uh, unfortunately, he only was only able to get one level zero Escanor, so he only had, was able to single combo me. Ooh. So um I I think I canceled the. The bouncer swing, I eat most of the ping ones from the combo. Uh, and then I just cancel uh, the full Escanor swing. Uh, and then I, my hand is so sculpted at this point, and I still have so much stock. Uh, I was able to uh, bounce a lane, get double Escanor. I still had like three stock souls in my deck. So I swing with Escanor, combo, reveal stock soul, him like 3 5. Uh, and he's like, okay, well, I might be able to live. And I just tell him, tell him yeah, I have another stock soul in here. Uh, I did not trigger on the second Escanor, but then he just proceeded to die. So very easy game, unfortunately. Yeah, it's like in, in that, like, <clears throat> since your games are like really coin flippy. Once you get ahead in like the mirror, especially it's, for like seven so, W's, you're just yeah, you just kind of like so you just like kind of like you keep stabbing the knife in, right? You just you just keep pressing the advantage yeah. and you just get there. <laughs> All right, my rematch with Clinton. He got me the first time. You know, he told me before our round five match. He was like, uh, "Whenever I play the mirror, I usually lose to us and then win win uh, top top cut." Uh, that's why I knew. The re reverse reverse is gonna happen. I was gonna, <laughs> I, he was gonna win the Swiss and then lose top cut. What I what, what happened in this game? Uh, he gets first. He summons uh, Milam. Now the reason why I don't like Milam Runner anymore is because I could do a simple play of slam down Chloe. Chloe <laughs> answers Milam, and he was like, "Damn, you didn't play Kaijin this time." I he he, he drew like the the Exodia pieces of Shimakai plus a, Chloe plus Brainstorm to answer my my. Uh, Kaijin. And so he just does his play. Push me to level 1. 
And I I did the powerful player thing where even though I used zero mass and zero rickies, I had triple combo in hand plus CX and plus a CX and a CX offer. <laughs> oh, how do you do that? Do you, do you give lessons? <laughs> oh, you just you What's your right, dude? That, that, how do you, <laughs> do you teach people that? <laughs> so yeah, I just slammed on triple combo, did the swap. Uh, push them to level one. He he does his combo. Uh, he he does like clo mask mask plus Chloe to find double combo. Spawn. He goes triple combo himself. I whiff one of my Shizus. So you know he does that front hit. I hit goes memory front whiff. Uh, then he just sides the last one, so I don't get the last memory. So there I'm already I'm already saying here's like damn I'm already gonna be losing the the uh a memory memory game but at least i was able to get the potion maker first so i can start building up memory i mean stock faster i double combo again and push him to zero unfortunately the turn before uh he did not have uh he what's it called triggered like once and then i, I see it seems he drew one of, one of his last uh cx's as he refreshed to level two and then, so because he's because he was already out like two CXs, or like three CXs, he plays down his uh, room room that that can free fresh. He does a refresh play. He refreshes uh, three C three or four CXs back into his deck. And uh, fortunately for him, uh, his next three attack two of them hit a, a climax again. So mm -hmm. he he's already down back back down to like a six five or six climax deck. So I just uh, early played swing swing, and then pushed him to two six. He had the option to uh, heal down or clock himself to level up, but because he only comboed once that turn, uh, he did not have. I assume he just did not have the hand because he also wasted like resources to play the two on Rimuru and kept in the back row so he can answer my early play. So. He levels up up to three. Uh, he does like single combo, just try and play conservatives, try to heal or keep keep uh, compression, and swing. So I think we go for a few more turns until we hit level three. Uh, he says he believes that he could live. He, he was like three three at that I by that, that point, and he he's like he's like, like, he like I believe here. I yeah. he can live, and I was able to you know do a simple. Cause I've been actually been whiffing my Shizu level ones quite a bit. Cause I, cause you know, I reveal it for cancels and I end up canceling. So you do a simple mask into combo into into double combo play. And you know, all I needed was one of the stick. He was like, I can, I can cancel all five of these. Cause he has five more sticks in the deck, but he could not cancel all five of them and win the game. So I got my, my revenge against him. At the end, yeah. So thankfully, Ollie and Kevin both got their run back because UA definitely got the run back against me. Uh, so I ended up having to replay against Memory Hall Live. UA had a much more stable game this time around. Um, he got some pretty good cancels off in the mid game, so I wasn't able to stick any real damage to him. And the damage I did stick, like I wasn't able to really like capitalize on Sio Bomb to deny memory. So he managed to get his three memory. He played the clown. Fucking VTuber, I forget her name. Polka, I think her name's Polka. So you managed to play like you know double Polka, heal down, um, and just like you know he managed to really stabilize down to like that really like low level two. Um, at one point we were still like uh, I tried to double Casa he or cost me him. I think I got him like three two three three. Uh, but then I remember uh, Hall Life has this really sick uh card. Um, I think it's the IMA. Uh, to where uh, on play it just levels down two of your cards so i'm like all right cool i'm like all right i'm like all right i think i'm set you know i have like you know double cost me turning off his auto effects and two lanes i have uh you know this one neg soul counter you know i definitely have an extra turn uh but then he plays this card levels down my two cost <laughs> uh proceeds to like double marring me and i just kind of explode from there because you know what can, what can you really do from that um, so I end up losing my final game, but thankfully both Ollie and Kevin managed to carry me there. So, so we ended up yeah. winning, which is awesome. 
That's awkward too, because he was the la- last match to finish. So me, me and Oliver already won, and then we're like celebrating there, and and then I, I look over, I say, like, oh shit, this guy's still in his game. <laughs> he wants to finish it up. Oh, I think, I think, I think. Well, like uh, once you guys finish, like Simu came over, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah just finish your guys' game, uh, game out, and just go from there. So yeah, so we, this we is, still played it out. I was actually, this is my like second time winning Texas. The same thing happened when I was playing last year. With, Defending with Ryan. champion, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I was playing with Ryan and Jason, that was the same thing that happened where me and Ryan finished our game first. <laughs> and then uh, Jason's just awkwardly trying to finish his game and ended up losing. But, you know, it's still a celebra- <laughs> celebratory moment where we, we didn't distract them, but, you know, that was a good, it was a good time carrying these boys. <laughs> Thank you for the carry. Yeah, you were our carry. You went a one. I remember strong. correctly. I did better than yeah. I did last year where I went seven two. Or I did not <laughs> need to carry Ryan and Jason because those two also kept up. J- Ryan Ryan was like eight one last year. Crazy. Yeah, what do we say, Ollie? So like, I I helped carry you in Swiss, and you helped carry me yeah, in Top Gun. I was the shitlord so, like, in Swiss. Yeah, so it's like so. I think our records are both me and Ollie ended up finishing six three. Um, I went five one in Swiss, uh, one two in top cut. Ollie went three three in Swiss, uh, two one in top cut. Three zero. Uh, oh, three zero. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, you went three zero in top cut, and then Kevin just went eight one with the the only loss being to the slime mirror in um round five Swiss. Yeah, I'm just glad that every time I won, I was able to look on my sides and see at least one of the two win, along with me. <laughs> Closing it out. Yeah. And then, yeah. Fun times. It was a fun tournament. And it was a fun tournament. The fact we were not going to be there like two weeks before. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah as we yeah, celebrated. Pretty funny. We only really got together like about a like, week and a half, two weeks out to the tournament and be like, all right, guys, we're going to do this. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, as, as we won, we're like, man, just think about it. Three weeks ago, we weren't, we, we weren't even sure if we were going to show up to Houston or not. But luckily, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Now we got some nice guitar PR. Unfortunately, they, they don't have medals this year again. I was pretty upset about that. Yeah, they didn't have any medals, so they don't have like pins for top eight. They don't have medals for top three. It's a little. Yeah, I missed the pin. The pins look so nice. Pins are on the nice. bright side. Like though, the okay, the mat, the mat looks really nice. Like the top three mat is, that's pretty good design. Yeah, but usually it was they they got top eight mats before. Or, no, that's not that's not for Spring Fest. Okay. It was like no, that, that's not that was not enough. Yeah, that's not for Spring Fest. Spring Fest was, yeah. only had the top eight pins. Well, I I, I personally would enjoy the, the metal better. I think the metal looks nicer to hang up in your room than the mat. Under the mat, yeah. it's probably you have more people seeing it because I actually bring the mat around to different places now. No fun note. Apparently, my relatives saw it and it's like, damn, you wore the same shirt. This year is as last year when you won Texas. My blue polo shirt. <laughs> nice. <laughs> lucky clothes. Yeah, dude. Apparently so. You you got you got to get that luck up, dude. You got to wear you got to wear like the same shit. You got to like same thing. I think I told you guys a couple times. And, like fucking uh, when we were like getting to a table first, I'm like, no guys, like we're winning on this side of the table, so we got to win on or we got to stay on this side of the table. You got <laughs> you got to put that luck stat up. You know what I mean? True, true. Yeah, I think we, we, most of our games were looking away from the stage. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we. No, I think most of our games were facing towards the stage. Most of our games were facing towards the stage. Yeah. But yeah, fun times. And the day before we had, we spent a lot of money eating steaks. That, oh yeah. Uh, what did that, you did you get the tomahawk or was that just all like? No, that was me and Oliver. So fun fact. Okay, so you guys <laughs> both got the tomahawk steaks. Yeah. Okay. The day before the tournament, eleven of us went to get uh, Ace of steaks. Texas. Taste of Texas, to get some steaks. And shout out to that place, dude. That their their steaks were even though I didn't get the tomahawk. Their their food was on point. Yeah, we got we got four of us out of eleven of us who went there. We got a tomahawk steak. Three of us who got a tomahawk steak ended up in the finals. Me, Oliver, and UA ended up and being the fourth in the person. Uh, the fourth person went four one. Yeah, and their team. Yeah, unfortunately, their team was so, yeah. unable to keep up. So if you go to Houston and get a tomahawk steak before the uh, Spring Fest, and you you, yeah. you you can be a winner too. <laughs> they should. They should. Uh, you should probably like add that. a disclaimer that the tomahawk steak costs one hundred and fourteen dollars <laughs> before tax and tips. 
It yeah, was before a lot tax of and tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was good. Yeah. And with that being said, that is basically turn report. Uh, I might do like a full deck. Uh, what's called deck recipe video, but probably not because we already ha have a deck profile from Clinton, which is goes over most of the stuff that about the slime deck with the small changes that I made going over mm -hmm. this video. Oliver, I think you said you wanted to make your own deck profile video. I was thinking about it, but like since we just did it here, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Would and, be much. And your deck is probably the pivoting deck is in, in the next meta, right? Yeah. yeah I, I think like, it only like that. you're in like the the weird spot where like for your deck it only like really like this is the last event where it will really work until the meta shifts. Yeah. Well, Nico, I feel like some people might want to check out your deck. So you, if you ever decide to do a deck, I'll talk with Hanson. I almost want to just like let Hanson do the deck profile on Burn One or wherever he chooses to do it, um, mm -hmm. just because he's the one who like gave me. He literally gave me like. I think it was like 45 out of the 50 cards to where I think like the only card where I looked at it was like, I think both me and Carmen, um, beating Wolf from uh, PGH, were just like talking about her in a Weiss call at one point. And we're just like, yeah, you know, this uh, Goblin Slayer profile from Marissa isn't really that good right now. Uh, so I think Carmen ended up for his list pivoting to like uh, the 4 0, I want to say. It wasn't Layer. It was a 4 0 raise. It was a 4K card. Layer. Yeah. It was a 4 0 raise the swing card. It might have been later. I, I forget the name. And to where I pivoted more towards uh, the level 0 Sio Bomb. But we ended up being, making pretty much almost the exact same list at that point. The funny thing is, Hanson's like, yo, I built this deck to like, counterplay towards Alice. I didn't really like, build it to like play towards anything else. But I, uh, I still think the deck performed like pretty well. Uh, the only real issue is, if you take a look at the deck, it's only got 10 soul triggers, uh, which can be pretty rough, uh, especially nowadays to where decks are running a lot more than 10 soul triggers, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's all for this stream. Thank you guys for watching. Any shoutouts you want to uh, give out, Oliver and Nico? Uh, not really shouts, but uh, I will be in Chicago in a couple weeks, so say hi to be there. <laughs> I will probably not be in Chicago, uh, but shout outs to you guys specifically. Uh, I know I think our team came together last minute, and I was the one who was like really like, Ollie, come on, you got to get on the team. Oh, yeah, shout outs uh, to Nico for funding my trip. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shout, shout out to the shirts and also for apparently I booked the the hotel room wrong. Shout outs to them for giving us a proper room because uh, we, I think we initially only had like one bed in our room, and that was that was pretty cringe. Yeah. <laughs> that was scary for a second. I was like, oh no, what are we gonna do? Dude, oh, it was already late like, at night. We're gonna be standard. snuggling up. <laughs> shout outs to Burn One, uh, all those guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they didn't do too well that tournament compared to strictly though. They did not. <laughs> no, they did not. Strictly yeah, better team. I think they, they, they heard quite a little bit. <laughs> Shoutouts to uh, Strictly Broken Store for not having their AC breakdown this year compared to whatever story went oh, last year. Oh, that that was a really fun local. So, like, what? Uh, all he ended up going, like, what did you go? Like, 5 0, 6 0. I think I ended up going, like, X1. And then, like, the last round, we were literally like, all right, guys, you know. We already made reservations to go get this, like, you know, fancy steak, so we gotta leave. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, I looked at, I looked at my, uh, my, my matchup, because I went 5-0, I looked at my round 6 matchup, it was the down pair, uh, it was Dan from New Jersey, I said, I'll just get a scoop to you so we can cut rounds. <laughs> <laughs> and we just did that, and we left for food. I went, food? hold on, forget that guy's Sorry name. Sorry for everyone in the locals, they beat the night. Yeah. Kind of screwed I over forget this guy. dude's name. I think his name was like Sora or Seru. Shout out to the guy from Strictly Broken who played uh, Miku Waifu from Kaguya. Oh my goodness. That guy was unbelievably strong. This is like the PGH, like, you know, president's video of like his, his wife who was protecting him. That guy's blessed, man. Shout outs to you, dude. I lost him. <laughs> you were. He was a yeah, strong dude. dude. He, he was a powerful player. Yeah. Hell yeah, think, I, well, I probably I think I was gonna might have played him next round. I, good thing I scooped. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he was X one by the point.
But yeah, I I didn't do too hard on strictly broken because I was saving. I, apparently, I was saving all my luck for the actual event. Well, with that being said, True. thank you guys for watching, and I'll get this video up soon. But right. if you aren't watching.